That is not what I fucking expected when opening this. What? Uh... Well, hello, everyone! Already, my... Okay, I need to set... Damn it. One sec. Okay. Welcome back. Skip, skip, skip. <laughs> I don't want to hear that every time I start it up. But, uh, yeah, there was, like, a whole thing about setting up the controller. What? It's still wrong! What? It's more wrong! It's even... Why is that broken? Damn it! One sec. That is impressive. Like... There's this whole configuration thing going on with, um, using a controller, and apparently it's just straight up on the wrong buttons. Like, I can press, because you can press a button to set which one it is, and now it's just on a different button, basically. So, <laughs> this is a great start. Normally my LPs start with something going wrong, and this is just a fun, this is just a fun way. So, hello, I'm gonna fix this in a second. Maybe I'll just not use a controller, even though that would be quite nice if I could. Um, may, I, I guess maybe that won't be the case. Uh, but, hello, and welcome to Chaos Child, the thing that I was gonna play after Fate Hollow Ataraxia, and I'm done with Fate Hollow, uh, Hollow Ataraxia, so... We're gonna jump into it now. It's actually something new in my channel, and that's the most exciting thing! I've been playing the same three games for the past... Well, since the beginning of the year. <laughs> They've all been the same. So... Uh... This is from the creators of Steins Gate, I know that. Uh, I don't know much about it. I do have a memory of one of my friends really liking Chaos Head. I don't remember if he ever told me anything about liking Chaos Child. It's just one of those sets of games that I put off going towards. And before anyone says anything, because this was mentioned when people were making suggestions for the game and whatnot. Uh, basically, I am aware that Chaos Head has like an enhanced version that there's like a fan localization thing going on. I remember being told that it's close to coming out back when we originally did the poll in, like, September, October, November of last year, somewhere in that time frame. And it doesn't sound like it's any closer to being out, so... I just bet on fan translations. They'll come out when they come out. I make no plans on that whatsoever. So, even if I was considering that, I'm just gonna jump into this now. So, new game. <sighs> Given... Our starting point, uh, 2009, eh? Well, only 11 years of the apocalypse. It came without warning. I don't know much about this at all. Even from just the, oh, I, I think it has like more of a psychological horror vibe to it. Is the only real thing I know about it. And this is only really served? Huh. To make me feel as though that might still be the case. It was a magnitude 7.8 earthquake with an epicenter directly under the city. This disaster reduced one of Tokyo's busiest downtown areas to nothing in a single night. The high-rise buildings that had birth so many trends and fads collapsed as if giving up on their role in society. Black fires spread through the city as individuals fell into the grip of the crowd's psychology. So like mob rule, you mean? Their terror mag uh, was magnified? Combined, all these things took many lives. Uh, the final death toll was 3,851. The final number of injured, 30,000. 927. The event would later be known as the Shibuya Earthquake.
Uh, so, from my- I also have a generally vague understanding that while this is a sort of sequel to Chaos Head, it's not like you have to have played the previous one sort of sequel. Sequel. It's one of those. Uh, at least to my understanding, and I'm sure there were people that'd be like, well, no, not really. And I, I at least understand where you're coming from. I've still made my choice knowing all that. Uh, even in all that destruction, people still suffered the most in their hearts. Some who had lost their families came together to share a new resolve, while others who'd been forced to watch their friends die were driven by guilt to take their own lives. Okay. Are those counted as deaths of the earthquake in the same sense? Because, I mean, if it's chain reaction sort of stuff, you could say... You could make the same argument against it as you could for, like, say, rubble falling or something like that. And killing someone who was, like, unconscious or something like that. Uh, as the baby was miraculously reunited with its parents after 72 hours, a child in an evacuation shelter asked her dad, When's mommy coming home? <sighs> he had no answer. Some of the wounded made it to the hospitals by looking at real-time updates on the web. Others saw people on the internet talking about the disaster as if it were a movie and were driven mad? Driven mad how? What do you mean? Hmm. A homeless man was saved from malnutrition by an organized volunteer group, but at the same time, a middle school boy punched a self-centered volunteer who'd come to Shibuya to find himself in the face. Okay. Uh, it was the first time in that boy's life he'd ever been violent. Right, there's the whole tips thing, too. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. Is there... Oh, there's menus. Tips. Oh, I I've played Steins Gate. Uh, post-traumatic stress. Now, I know what it is, just curious how this all works. Okay. No, it's, it's back always. Okay. Escape is always quit the game. Got it. That's a really neat menu. The psychological toll was incredible, and many of the survivors were later... Uh, would later manifest symptoms similar to those associated with PTSD. The young were hit the hardest, and before long, the cause of those symptoms were given a name. Chaos Child Syndrome. Hmm. Rebuilding happened at a feverish pitch never seen before. It felt inappropriate to say, hang in there, but people felt that somebody had to do something. The new slogan was Shibuya, a city reborn, and no amount of money or manpower was spared in aiding that endeavor. So what caused the earthquake? Does that look like a pillar of light? Considering the fact that it looked like a helicopter was brought down by it, it didn't seem like it was an actual earthquake. The whole town was in the grip of a fever. In private, a leader of the re uh, redevelopment effort said, This may sound unkind, but this frenzy feels like a town bearing its grief by holding a festival. Building codes were rigorously evaluated with an eye towards earthquake engineering. Perhaps in an effort to emphasize the city's safety, security cameras were put up all over town. Shibuya would become a place where everyone could live in peace. But at the same time, a rumor began to spread about the earthquake. Something about this earthquake doesn't make sense. Really? The whole pillar of light didn't give it away? It feels like there would have been a lot of eyewitnesses to that. There are no aftershocks, and the damage had spread in a strange way. Harajuka and Ebisu, don't know if I'm pronouncing those right, areas only a kilometer away from Shibuya, suffered few casualties in even fewer collapsed buildings. For that size of earthquake, I don't have any uh, reference point for me, but that does sound like that's the point they're getting at. Uh, the damage uh, pattern had never been observed in any prior earthquake. And so, more than a few pundits claim the Shibuya earthquake must have been artificial. Hmm. Well, the problem I still see is that a helicopter was brought down. 
if I remember that opening thing first, which implies that it's not an earth rumbling thing, it's a everything rumbling thing. Or something else of that nature. Uh, more than anything, some of the survivors had all said the same thing. I saw a white light. I heard a sound like a ringing in my ears. Too many people experienced this for anyone to laugh it off, but no cause of these phenomenon was ever found. It was just more evidence to those who believed that something about the earthquake had been wrong. Then, six years after the strange earthquake in 2015, something else was about to attract attention in the reborn city of Shibuya. Creepy. <laughs> there's a there's a lot of like children's or babies like laughing and giggling or other things that sound like they were recorded by children. Oh boy. So I'm inclined to assume that opening part was basically a very vague summation of some of the events from the first game. Hey, The second he spoke, the comment box started to fill. Yuma, uh, uh, Otani, uh, watched it for a few seconds and then saw the request. When does Haru tell us she's dating somebody? He smiled to himself. Just what he wanted. Most of the requests were about hot actors or cute idols. His audience was so stupid that it was easy to tell exactly what they were going to ask. The problem was always whether the name that came up was someone he knew. That was a question of luck and <laughs> of how popular they were. But Haru, her full name was Ark or something or other, she was fine. Fictional. Haruku Natsuno, 19 years old, my celebrity, became famous as a result of her bold declaration that no one her age knew as much about retro games and retro anime as she did. Oh my fucking goodness, some people are so predictable in their um, interest and, uh, let's say, allegiances. Some people put too much uh, faith into, to put too much of their identity into some things, I'll say then. Uh, and her ability to back up the declaration on the internet, radio, and live streaming programs. Uh, so she backed it up, but the problem I more have is the fact that that would be enough to, you know... <laughs> Where's glasses? Her plain clothes and hairstyle are said to be one reason she's popular with otaku. Regularly holds recordings of internet radio shows that are open to the public. Interesting. Uh, she was fine. Just a few days ago, he forced himself to go to an event he'd rather have skipped and seen it for himself. Yes. Satisfied? Uh, I'm just gonna, o Otani. I, I, I never remember how to handle the double O in Japanese uh, type names. Uh, got up to get some snacks, like he always did. He lived in a one bedroom condo located eight minutes from Shibuya Station. Cost? 15. Uh, 150,000 yen per month. Oh, that would. That would not be fantastic, yeah. Better make a good living if you're paying that much for rent. Uh, it had been built after the earthquake, so the furnishings and layout were modern. A little more room would have been nice, but compared to the 40,000 yen per month place he'd uh, lived in last year, ah, oh, it was heaven. At 21 years old, Otani felt satisfied for the first time in his life. In fourth grade, he'd gotten big into online gaming and stopped going to school. Eventually, he stopped leaving his room altogether. Hmm. And then he got addicted to drugs that made him sleepy, but did nothing else. Once seeing only darkness in his future, he'd planned to commit suicide. 
In the chaos, after the earthquake six years ago, he finally managed to leave his room, but his family had already given up on him. After he failed his entrance exams, he went to live on his own Shibuya, and he hadn't spoken to his parents since. As far as they knew, he failed the exams three times in a row. In fact, he hadn't, he hadn't even gone to the test after the first time. There wasn't anything he wanted to learn in college, or companies he wanted to work for badly enough. He had no goal in life at all. But things were different now. Some Japanese social media site, I presume. I feel like I've heard that sort of thing before. He took a block of cheap cheese he'd bought on the uh, at the supermarket out of the fridge. Usually, he never ate anything this cheap. But on Nico Nia live streaming, Nico Nico is a thing, right? If I remember that correctly, it wasn't what you said; it was how you looked. How you looked when he said it also mattered. Utani wasn't a good-looking man, let alone a cute girl. He was just a plain old guy, and so to keep his program popular, he needs to make them think that he was poor. Barely managing to scrape by, in fact. That's why he kept uh, the area around the PC, and the parts of his apartment that you could see with his webcam, completely plain. Last month, he finally reached a goal of 4,000 viewers. For a man with nothing going for him like Utani, this was extremely unusual. Uh, three months ago, he'd guessed the winners of the popularity contest a certain idol group was holding, as well as their total numbers of votes. That must have really paid off. That sounds really specific. And after that, his numbers had been going up steadily. Late last month, when his streams had appeared at the top of the Nikonia's page, he'd seen a huge increase. Right now, he'd gotten above 4,500, and it was quite possible he'd break 5,000 by the end of the month. It was around late last year when he started to wonder about his power. Okay, it, it, hmm? What he said before made it sound like he knew people who was telling him these sorts of answers. It was a certain rumor on one of the uh, At Chance Occult boards that made him really start to realize what he had. The name he chose in first stream subtly reflected this. Then I learn that I can see the future. He took out a knife and cut the cheese. There was a strange sound. Didn't see that coming, did you? Huh? <laughs> he thought he'd just imagine it when... Knock, 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 knock. He heard it again. It was coming from the door. Someone was clearly knocking on his door. Mitsurinko? Uh -huh. Chanko? Oh, Amazon. Amazon, okay. Suspicious. He walked towards the door to answer, then checked the clock. It was 11.41 p.m. Not exactly normal delivery hours. He tried to ignore it. But... The knocking continued. It was the same rhythm at the same pace. As if the visitor's goal wasn't to come inside, but to simply make that sound. <clears throat> the time he felt a bit creeped out, he decided to go to the intercom camera and see who it was, but then realized it would be pointless. Only the auto-locking door on the first floor had a camera. The door to Udan uh, Utani's room on the fifth floor had an intercom, but no camera. Tani gave up. No, the knocks were too steady for that. And there's no voice yelling at him to open up. I mean, it feels like something's gonna kill him if he opens the door. But, uh... <sighs> we'll see. He's seen this door a million times, but suddenly it looked different somehow. Someone he didn't know was on the other side of the wall, demanding entry in the middle of the night. 
Somehow this made the door seem intimidating. Tani thought he might look through the people to see who's outside. He was then disgusted to find himself too scared to even get close to the door. Wait. The intercom didn't have a camera, but it did have a microphone. He turned towards the living room so he could use the intercom to find out what they wanted. Tani, it's me. Sorry to come by so suddenly. He stopped when he heard that voice. <sighs> it's me. I'm very sorry to bother you at this hour. Tani tried to remember who the speaker was, but found he couldn't. So someone he should remember but doesn't. From the tone of the voice and the words, they probably weren't a weirdo. When they said, I'm sorry, it sounded like they really meant it. <sighs> Tani sighed softly with relief, then realized he was still carrying the knife he had been using to cut cheese. It suddenly felt stupid to feel so nervous. He quickly laid the knife on top of the sink. Are you still streaming? You said you were streaming before. Is this all on camera? It's me. Don't you remember? The voice simply repeated itself. But who are you? Utani whispered to himself as he opened the door. Tani narrowed his eyebrows at the people standing there. He looked them up and down, then looked at their faces again. Their eyes met. Ontara, doko no donata? Tani suddenly felt a piercing headache. <laughs> Closed his eyes, put his right hand up to his temple. You could feel the blood bounding in his veins through his fingers. He staggered and quickly put the other hand against the wall to keep from falling over. The pain was like that of old days when he'd overdosed on antidepressants, but much more intense. He grit his teeth against the pain. He grit his teeth against the pain, dug his nails into the wall that was holding him up. He waited for the pain in his fingers to help dull the pain in his mind. Tsutani, are you okay? He heard a voice he'd heard many times before. He felt a concerned hand on his shoulder. He somehow managed to ignore the pain and open his eyes. A worried face was peering down at him. Ah, uh, uh, Overwork, perhaps. You've been so busy lately. You shouldn't push yourself too hard. Hmm. He opened his mouth as wide as he could and moaned, trying to ease the pain as he let his important guest inside. As he turned his back on his guests, he told himself that it had been a long time since he'd seen them. Or maybe not. He couldn't, it, it couldn't have been more than two months since they'd last met. Hmm. It only felt long because he wanted to see them so badly. While he was out here, he decided he would cut some cheese for himself and his guests. You know, the cheap cheese that he only eats because he's trying to look poor. <laughs> oh, don't worry about us. Yeah. What's wrong? Yeah. The blade wasn't cutting into the cheese. That's strange, he told himself as he pushed down with more force. Uh-oh, he's gonna... He cut into its surface, and it made an unpleasant sound he never heard before. Oh, that! oh no, he so totally just cut into himself, didn't he? But no matter how hard he pushed, it wouldn't go further. 
Are, are these people, like, fucking with his senses and making him... Because either he's remembering something that he forgot, or he's having, like, memories planted into him. The fact that it sounds sounded like he just fucking... Cut a knife into, like, his hand or something. I'm guessing it's the latter. I'm gonna be used to yank the knife back and forth like a saw, but it only cut it slightly deeper. It was as if there was something hard inside the cheese. And even though he'd just taken it out of the fridge, it was slightly warm. <sighs> Why would they purposely make him think his hand is cheese, though? Irritated, he slammed the handle of the knife against the cheese. But all it did was bash it in a little. He couldn't cut through it. I'll help you. His guests must have heard the sound because they rushed over. They had another knife. When did they get that out? There's a trick to cutting this thing. Oh, they're doing it. Yep, they're doing it on purpose. They put the knife up against the cheese and began to move it with a practice hand. Sounds like your work is going well. They smiled at Tani, their voice is slightly low. Tani realized that they were trying to keep their voices from being picked up by the streaming microphone and lowered his voice as well. Ah. He grinned and nodded. His guests had introduced him to a firm that handled advertising space for popular websites, which had been given him, which had been giving him regular work. His reputation had quietly spread throughout the small web advertising industry, so he was getting more and more offers. No, I think he might lose at other things, though. Then why do those streams? That's right. His power wasn't meant to be wasted on jobs that anyone could do. No, it's wonderful, I think. And... done. After he smacked it a few times, the cheese was a little funny looking. But even slices were lined up neatly on the plate. Oh, it's nothing. Go on. I'll wait until your stream is finished. <laughs> what is it? It doesn't look like a human hand, at least. Tani took his cheese back to his seat and saw a flood of comments reading, He's late! Did he log off? What should have only been three minutes had turned into more than fifteen. Tani put a bite of cheese in his mouth and began to chew loudly. He apologized to the camera, remembering to keep up the act of being poor and starving. And as he hoped, the comments started to come in. W. Report this broadcast will end soon. I heard you have new hobbies. This is weird. It's making me say, what happened? Oh, I'm very... Trained in Hollywood, I can tell. What? Oh, no. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. They can all see it. Tani's face look had a... Uh, Tani's face took on a confused expression. His comments were strange. He thought that there might be something on the camera, but he turned around and saw only his fake poor room. Uh, he spoke into the camera. But the comments still didn't make any sense, and they were coming in faster. Maybe there's a problem with the camera. He reached his right hand out towards it. In an instant, his headache was back. Ah! 
It's the same pain as before. No, worse. He closed his eyes and jerked forward, banging his head against the desk. But the pain is out of so bad that he didn't even feel it. He tried to hold his head in his hands, but for some reason, his right hand wouldn't move. So instead, he pushed his other hand up against his temple. It felt squishy. The vein was incredibly swollen, and it felt like rubber. And each time he felt blood pulse through it, there's an unpleasant sensation in his fingers. He stamped his feet against the floor, hoping to find some small escape from the pain. But it didn't even get slightly better. It was then that he realized he was crying. He could feel the tears coming from his eyes. The pain was moving there now, too. <laughs> Unable to bear it, he opened his eyes. Oh my goodness. This video's fake. This is disgusting. I'm subscribed to this dude's channel! Oh, do you guys think this is cool? You're sick. Oh my goodness. He gasped. The whole scene appeared in front of him like some kind of awful magic trick. <laughs> he suddenly heard the sound of something wet dripping onto the floor. His eyes reflexively turned towards it. His right arm was gone at the elbow, and the stump was gushing blood. Oh wow, that's a lot more than I thought that he was going to do. There's a pull of it on the floor, and the sound he heard was the new blood splattering into it. Huh? Tommy didn't understand what had happened to him. What was going on? He'd just gone to check on a knock at the door. <laughs> the pain screamed within him, and he said the pain in what remained of his right arm was overcome by the pain in his head. He found nothing from his arm at all, though he saw the blood dripping to the floor. What the hell was going on? He blinked and forces acting eyes to function as he looked around the room. Oh, yeah, that changed. On top of his desk, he found the rest of his arm. Oh, are they gonna show it? Just sitting on a plate. There's like a little bit of something at the end of that flash there before, but at first it was, it looked like it was still in one piece, but it wasn't. Don't show it, I actually don't want to see it. It was neatly sliced into uniform pieces. Each piece was about a centimeter wide, and the slices moved neatly toward his fingers. He sat upon the plate in, roughly, his arm's original shape. Miraculously, he saw there's no blood on the tip of his index finger. <laughs> he still didn't understand that it was really his own arm. But sheer disgust at what he saw caused him to leap out of his chair. What was this? What kind of prank was this? Contents of his stomach flooded into his mouth. He vomited. The pink fluid splashed against the desk. Yeah, I can only imagine the comments now. <gasps> he saw something solid in the middle of it. It was a thumb. It was covered in bite marks, saliva, and stomach acid. But horribly, he remembered it. What? At what point? I'm not remembering the point he would have ate it. Was it before or after? When did he put that into his mouth? In his pain-filled mind, he suddenly heard a sound he never heard before. Each time he heard the sound of pain, and his head got worse. He turned towards the camera, hoping for an answer to what was happening. But of course, there was none to be found. The screen was still filled with comments, but his eyes were too filled with tears for him to read them. As the whole world turned red, Tani didn't even realize that his lips were turning purple. His lips had turned purple from lack of oxygen, but were stained red with blood from his severed thumb, which he had chewed himself. As he tried to fight the pain, he began to fall unconscious. Tears fell from his eyes. The tears seemed pink to him. He was weeping blood. He died. Still facing the camera.
good start. Good start, guys. I'm, I'm totally not completely feeling fucked in the head. Okay, I went back a little bit to, because I was trying to remember at a point, because I didn't remember a point that he actually, like, went and tried to eat some of the, quote, cheese, end quote. And I didn't find it in my quick scan of the before the people showed up stuff. So I'm inclined to assume it was after. The important thing there is I'm thinking, was it happening before and then the Nox might have been part of it even? Or was it these people that might have been inducing this state? And I'm thinking it's the latter, which is the more obvious one, but if he had... Because he, he got the cheese out beforehand. I, I, I'm quite curious if there's even cheese there. Uh, still, just like in a different place, maybe. Hmm. His guests watched the chain of events unfold and silently headed for the door. Just before they left the room... Goodbye. They said, as if nothing was wrong, and then shut the door. What the hell? Talk about desperate. I'm bored. Go back to the usual stream. <laughs> oh my fucking goodness. Internet fucking culture is one fucking thing, and it has been for a long time, hasn't it? September 19th, 2015, Friday night. I don't remember what day, what day it said before. <sighs> uh, Momone Taki, uh, Takayanagi had finished her concert, like always. She stayed behind to help put away the instruments. She even helped clean up the uh, audience seats, even though it was the concert hall's job. Only after all that was done could she take a break. There wasn't much time before her solo street concert, but she still had to help anyways. She's always been like that. I'm still waiting for someone with, like, character art to show up. <laughs> like, is this an actual character we're gonna follow? Uh, even if it wasn't her responsibility, she couldn't get uh, help again involved. It was, like, it was like in middle school, when one of her friends who wasn't uh, as good at studying as her asked her for test notes. Or in high school, when a girl she knew asked her how to make a val uh, uh, how to make Valentine's chocolate for a boy she really liked, she stayed up so many nights. Her own test grades were worse than her friends, and she didn't have even anyone to give chocolates to on Valentine's Day herself. In the end, it was the other person's responsibility, not hers. But. <laughs> Momone Takinagi was, at heart, scared if not doing everything she could, even if everything wasn't her responsibility. The concert today was another big success. Sure, it was a tiny room that could only fit 150 people or so, standing room only, but tickets were 3,000 yen, high for a band with an amateur vocalist like her, and they still sold out instantly. It was bizarre how excited the crowd was. She'd heard sobs during the ballad. During one of the High Temple songs, the audience had stood up all the way to the back row. She felt a chill and hugged herself tightly. It's not that her band wasn't popular. They started out in the Nikonia Sengit category and had kept going by doing covers of popular anime songs. That makes... okay. That sounds like something I can imagine. Especially for someone getting popular in 2015. What would it be today, like? You, you, you'd start your music career by, like, lip-syncing... What was it, on Instagram or something like that? I'm trying to think, because, like, I don't watch those. Like, I'm actually sort of out of it. <laughs> the, you know the whole quote about, like, I used to be with it, but then they changed what it was. And honestly, at my age, I'm not old, <laughs> but I've gotten to the point where I don't care enough to keep track of what it is anymore. Not that that, uh... Not that I didn't get to that point pretty early. Uh, it helped that her face, which had earned her the nickname Scarecrow in school, could look really good when she wore makeup. If all of them put on ridiculous costumes and acted like idiots, some people would enjoy that. Videos of their concerts and performance pulled a decent number of views online. But Takinagi noticed. 
the vast majority of the people looking at the videos were people who'd come to her concerts. People who'd experienced that insane intensity were going back to the videos to try to feel it again. And Takinagi knew that they probably wouldn't even feel 1% of it. Yeah, there's clearly some mental fuckery going on here. And the fact that this is happening and people... It, it sounds like they're overly excited. Not that people can't be, like, s sad and crying during the ballad of a song or everyone in a small, uh, smallish crowd uh, could be really excited and stuff like that. But it does feel like that's a theme that's already coming out here. <laughs> The ticket prices and audience sizes were one thing, but the strangest things, uh, but the strangest thing to her was their eyes. Their eyes pierced right through here, unblinking. They were like pets, totally dependent on their master. Ugh. The meaning of the lyrics began to take over their lives, and they never even questioned it. When she first realized that this was happening, she tried to quit the band. Even if she couldn't, she at least wanted to stop doing the live shows, where people heard her directly. But the others around her wouldn't let that happen. Your voice is amazing, they would tell her. They forced her to keep singing, even as the concerts began to terrify her. Takayanagi uh, tried to get out of it, but in the end, she kept giving in. She owed her fellow band members for getting a plain, dull girl like her into music. And for a while, part of her managed to have fun. But in the end, Taki and Nagi lacked the tiny bit of courage needed to break out of the cycle. <sighs> she forced herself to get up and head towards a street concert, which she really didn't want to do. Mm? She received an email. She read it slowly. So... She almost dropped her smartphone. She read it again and again, trying to control her shaking hands. It's nothing special, just a simple message about one of the songs she'd made. Good song. Keep it up. Hmm. So... Taka Yanagi tried to stop the tears, but couldn't. Hmm. So if you had the power to influence people via your lyrics, couldn't you do something really good via that? If you had that deep of an impact on people, make them better people, that sort of thing. People that valued, you know, making the world a better place, maybe? I don't know. I feel like you if you had to keep doing it and you were stuck in that sort of cycle, there is at least a better option than just giving in if you can't get yourself to remove- if you can't remove yourself from it entirely, at least. Uh, she tried to stop the tears, but couldn't. The band would get too many messages like this to count, especially after concerts. She knew it was rude, but to be honest, she was sick of them. But this email address wasn't for her band, it was for- it was one for a site where she had anonymously uploaded original songs. In other words, whoever sent this message hadn't come to her concerts. They never heard her voice live or felt its strange power. They had still said they liked her song. <laughs> so she's happy? Wiping away her tears that wouldn't stop, she quickly wrote a response. That makes me really happy. Thank you. Even after she sent it, she kept crying for a while. She hadn't cried this much since the earthquake. And then she stood up. <laughs> she took her costumes for the day's concert out of her bag, balled them up, and threw them into the trash. It was a white caped outfit, worn by some angel character in some anime. Certain fans really loved it, but she didn't care about it at all. She took a wet towel off a nearby table and violently wiped away her makeup. She was never wearing another cape or putting on makeup to look like an anime character again. Never, she said aloud. She realized she was more excited than she'd ever been before. And then she started to realize what she wanted to do. 
いっそのこと渋谷を離れるってのもありかどうせいろいろごたごたしちゃうんだろうし What would happen if she said she was going to quit the band? You could also not say that and just leave. If you're really so bad at, you know, dealing with pressure of other people. It caused trouble for a lot of people, definitely. Her band was scheduled to play in the Restoration Festival. But even so, Jennifer wants to sing at another concert, and I feel like those people are going to show up and she's going to die again. Or she's going to. <laughs> <laughs> she laughed and kissed her smartphone. She couldn't wait to get home and start fiddling with her music. Over the web, she could really share her music with others. As long as they weren't hearing her voice live, it would be fine. She just played a recording from a speaker, for example. That's right. She leaves Shibuya. When she had a few more songs, she, she could record them, play them at a street concert. The speaker was small enough that she could fit it under her clothes to fool people. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think. I think people would realize the difference between live sound and a speaker sound, but you know what? Try it. Get over it. It would be rude to do the same song every time, so each time she'd re record it at home. <sighs> There's a knock at the door, one of the staffers, maybe. Okay. So there are people that presumably have some semblance, are either manipulating these people that have these extra uh, interesting manipulate uh, min ways. What would you even call it? She can, like, manipulate people with her songs and lyrics, and the other guy was able to guess elements of the future? Hmm. She smiled and answered them. Now that she'd thrown away her clothes, her bag was lighter than she'd ever imagined it could be. That lightness made her think about the future. She was happy. Like, the last guy was sort of shitty, but, you know, you didn't want him to die. And you're legitimately now seeing a person that's, like, turning her life around from, like, sort of, like, an abusive relationship with, like, everyone around her, in a sense. Where she's also being abusive to other people, and this is in the cycle of pain, and she's getting away from it, and then... Ugh. Taki and Nagi happily danced towards the door, completely ignorant of what was on the other side. Well, this is the same night, at least, I think. Shortly after she finished, she was walking through Shibuya. She had a limp and dragged one leg behind her as if it was injured. Her bangs were unnaturally long. Most of her face was covered by them. She wore a dark-colored dress that seemed to melt into the night. And above it, a bright red cardigan. Her chest, arms, and legs were almost completely covered. Despite the fact that night was still warm, she wore gloves, as if it were a sin to show any skin at all. Ah, sorry. She ran into a couple coming out of a hotel and staggered slightly. But she didn't even look at the people she ran into. She looked down and disappeared into the streets of Shibuya. I assume that was the same woman. But...
but maybe not? <sighs> Takaru Miyashiro. For example, let's say you asked a kid in middle school, do you know what Schrodinger's cat is? Most would say yes, or I've heard of it. We'll start by eliminating the DQNs who said they've never heard of it. DQNs. Never heard of that before. Oh my goodness, am I going to feel stupid for looking up this? Net slang. Stupid antisocial or delinquents. Okay. Basically, people who are angry at other people and don't and behave more irritated than not in social situations. Okay. Next, you ask, well, what was it? Next, we eliminate the poor fools to say, it's something about a cat in a box, right? Then there's this, there's this cat, but you don't know if it's alive or dead, right? Or maybe they say, there's a cat in the box, and next to it, there's a device that may or may not give off poison gas. You know if the cats are alive and open, until you open the box. Everyone knows that. We can eliminate these show-offs as well. Anybody from these groups is a wrong cider. Sort of wish you could just click on it. Someone on the wrong side of the digital or information divide. Okay. Interesting. The right answer would be to describe the experiment and then say... It was a thought experiment proposed by Schrodinger to criticize the quantum mechanical theory that state collapse only occurs after human observation. Okay. That, it feels like... <laughs> but barely anyone can do that. I mean, if I was asked what Schrodinger's cat is, like, I know that. I'm not sure I would answer in that way. <laughs> That's, um... Interesting. And I'd imagine that I'm the only guy who's, who's still in high school who knows that Schrodinger got the idea after exchanging letters with Einstein. Maybe. But that's also a bit of trivia that doesn't matter. That's a weird thing to be arrogant about. Knowing random trivia of a thought experiment. I hate wrong ciders. Don't tell me this is going to be our protagonist or something. Uh, I've taken a break from investigating the two incidents that had occurred recently in Shibuya and was paging through some of the at-channel blog aggregators for a change of pace. As always, articles about bad idols and corporations with terrible work environments were getting tons of hits. It's hard to believe that the Crash of 15, a huge news story that just happened this month, is already off the front pages. Uh, I don't remember that. Fictional. Okay. Solar Storm. Oh, when you say crash, I think like stock market crash. Huh. Also fictional, though. Okay, got it. It's hard to believe that the Crash of a Teen... Oh, yeah, uh, was already off the front pages. Did the people reading and commenting on these sites realize that everything they read about corporations and idols was carefully controlled? Hmm. Did they know that most of the big aggregator sites are corporations, too? Yeah. Did they realize that the comments were all manipulated to go in one direction or another? People, like, I'm not saying that doesn't happen, but people who focus on that typically see also see demons uh, in the comments where nothing can, uh, nothing that goes against what they want to be true uh, is ever a real person. Often the things that are against what I want to be true, maybe they're just stupid. Oh, no, no I'm joking. Uh, I feel like people get really paranoid and tend, especially on the internet. We talked about internet culture before. On the internet, people tend to get really in a mental state that they want to dig their feet in on their opinions and whatnot. Let's say that. <laughs> Kids our age were living in a world where all the information you could ever want was right at your fingertips. To, uh, to those of us in the enlightened generation, ignorance was the worst sin. As someone who grew up as the internet became a thing... I get where you're coming from, but man, this person is arrogant. The ignorant were self-righteous, easily manipulated, eager to push their paper-thin worldview onto others. They're nothing but a nuisance. 
The worst of the lot were the so-called Otaku. I couldn't stand Otaku. They were wrong siders. Oh my god. Take the picture on the cover of this magazine. It was from Blood Tune. That another. Is that an anime or something? The an no, Blood Tune. The animation. <laughs> A world first used on the internet. And like, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, that sounds like something. Often used to refer to people born in the 1990s. Well, admittedly, that includes me. So, I guess I'm enlightened, guys. <laughs> uh, take the picture on the cover of the magazine. It was from Blood Tune. Many Otaku just watched it for the cute characters was a loser. There's no point in watching the show if you're going to ignore its deeper things. <laughs> Oh my god, this <laughs> this person, like the whole Rick and Morty thing, if you guys remember that from like a number of years back when Rick and Morty got really popular and that was the whole thing, it's like, well, only people with a high IQ can understand Rick and Morty, and it turned into a joke the more that got spread, uh, into a, uh, the more that got spread, but... There were legitimate people who meant that when that was first starting, so... <laughs> I can stand people who still held to the old-fashioned idea that only otaku watched anime. And I can't stand people who hold to an idea that they need to look for every excuse to put themselves above others. But people who ignore the show's themes and just watch it for the cuteness were even worse. Legitimately, this guy just feels like he's embodying everything I hate about people. Oh my goodness. I really hope this isn't the protagonist. They're ignoring the implicit social criticism hidden in... Nani? I stared at the magazine in amazement. Specifically, I stared at the box that listed the next episode previews. Text said that Aaron was missing. Aaron? Is this a character? In the... Da, 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 character. Okay. Not like the actress or something is missing, that the character is missing. Bakaka! <gasps> they spoiled it! Damn it! I let my guard down because I knew this episode was written by the guy who wrote the original manga. No, there we go. How can you remove Aaron from the story halfway through? Not keeping her around meant bringing all the internal the internal drama that had been built up so far to a halt. God damn it! So much for my change of base. I knew I had to work to do. I knew I had to work to do on uh, to do on the case, but I put it away because I couldn't find any link between the two crimes. I thought for a moment, then took my magazine from its secret stash. Oh no! <laughs> it was an issue of an older magazine called Cool Cat Press. People called it a dating guide for normals written by someone who never dated a girl in his life, but you'd be surprised. Yes, I'm sure it's for quote normals. End quote. Stupid. I knew it was stupid, but I'm desperate. I. What is happening in this story so far? We're going from a guy who just fucking, like, a random streamer who just sort of shitty, but he died and is upsetting, and to another, to a girl that is about to turn around her life, and then she clearly died. I don't know if that was there on the street later. Maybe she didn't die, but something else fucking weird happened to her. Now we get to, like, the epitome of, like, problematic natures of internet warriors. Let's say that. When I ran an internet search for the number one phrase, nothing came back. And that was the thing. The fact that it didn't show up on the internet meant to me that it was worth something. <laughs> Is that a voice actor I, re I should recognize? Give me a sec. Give me a sec. Okay, I, I looked it up, and there's a lot of characters I actually probably would 
Uh, I have heard in Japanese the, that I've seen over the years at random points that I would recognize the voice from to some extent. I was thinking, like, is that Emmy as voice actor from the thing I just did? And no, I didn't find anything that suggests that it's the same voice actor. I don't think so. Uh, but <laughs> I just, like, heard it and was like, that vaguely sounds like Emiya. And it's like, don't tell me, don't tell me. <sighs> you have a character portrait? What? I turned to yell at the voice. Oh, she's looking down. That can't, that can't be good. Oh, Noe. Got it. I hid my favorite magazine behind my back and tried to calm my racing heart. Even if we've known each other since we were kids, don't just come in like that. I hope... If this is the protagonist, I really... Especially since we haven't seen his face and we are seeing other characters' faces at this point. If this is the protagonist, I really hope he stops being, like, the most annoying person ever. <laughs> oh my goodness. He's... He's... I, I don't think I've ever had a character get on my nerves this fast. <laughs> Legitimately. Oh my goodness. I couldn't let her find out. This is bad. Serika frowned. Ah, that's right. Real 16 gigabytes. Oh, I can't wait for the fake 16 gigabytes. Sarka took a USB memory stick out of her purse. Oh, oh, Sarka looked a little confused. She didn't seem to think much of it as she started to copy the data off. Okay, now's my chance. The RV is cramped, but there's a lot of space for storage. I pre uh, pretended to make tea as I tried to find room on the top shelf. Okay, there's just enough room for one more magazine. And then, I heard a pshoo pshoo sound like a small fart from behind me. Great. I glanced back and saw that Sarika was using the mouse with one hand and filling with her Garo Froggy Garoro strap on the other. That was my chance. The Garo Froggy Garoro strap was a soft vinyl cell phone strap I'd won in a candy contest when I was a kid. When he pushed its belly, it was supposed to go, Garoro, Garo! <laughs> Turned out to be an incredibly rare prize that could fetch 100,000 yen at auction. In good condition, I presume. But since I was a kid who didn't know any better, I gave it to Sarah as a present. You wouldn't have otherwise? Uh, she seemed to really like it, and ever since then, she carried it with her. Which, well, that was fine, but... It was old and faded. When he pressed its belly, air leaked out of the side and made a weird noise. It used to go, Garo Garo, I think, but now it just makes a strange bushing sound. Ever since she was a kid, she'd had a habit of fiddling with it. Especially when she was nervous or focused on something. In other words, she was focused on the computer. No, n now was my chance to hide it. Jammed the magazine onto the shelf and moved some things so she couldn't see it. Mountain view de Ika. Iyo, mutai nai jan. Sore ni sugu ni kaeru shi. Hai, shoujo. Hey, look at all those real-looking photos. Interesting. Quite a few files on the screen. Someone the. <laughs> I bet, I bet someone legitimately just took a screenshot of their computer at some point to do 
新しい発見はなかったよタクは新しい共通点見つかったいや Now I shook my head. Frustrated. Just as she was about to leave, I got an idea. I needed to double check my information. She was, in theory, a girl. ああ、なんていうかお前が告白されたとしてさ。うん。いや、だから例えばこう言われたらどう。誠に勝手なのですが、好きになってもいいですかって。さっき言ってたやつ。そ、それはいいから。Sarika thought for a second. What? Uh oh. Eh? Uh oh. Something's happening. Something's happening next time on Chaos Child! I'm gonna figure that out later. Uh, <laughs> I'm confused. Uh, I, 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 I'm very interested to see where this is going to go. Because it's already sort of gripped me in terms of what is happening sort of mentality. I mean, it feels like there's some semblance of a group going around acting and maybe is the insta... Like, it could be something like you have a group that gives these people their powers and then they just make them forget that they had all these... Uh, interactions with them, right? And then once they've got, like, made themselves too well known, got out of, maybe went beyond what they wanted to see them do or something like that, became like a detriment or something like that, and then they just come back and they kill them, basically. So maybe that girl's not dead, basically. Maybe they're ma manipulating her in some other way. <sighs> I'm inclined to assume there are people involved, basically. I'm still not 100% sure because what I was thinking before when I was looking back at the whole cheese thing earlier was like, could that have been part of the imaginary element of what was going on? It does feel conspiratorial for how uh, everything's set up, so. Next time, we'll figure out what positive and negative mean. So, I'll see you then. Drive safely, everyone. <laughs>